Hi guys, this is the day two of the revision plan, the 42 day revision plan and today we're going to do what we call the theory of demand. So the demand for a good is simply the relationship between the various possible prices and the corresponding quantities that our consumers are willing and able to purchase uh, during a certain time period. So there's some key words that we need to look at in the definition. The first one is that it shows your relationship between various possible prices and the corresponding quantities. So we will change prices and we'll see how quantity bought are changing. So this is a relationship between price and quantity sort of sold or quantity bought. And also importantly, it shows you what consumers are willing and able to buy. Willingness and ability makes it what we call an effective demand. Effective demand means that not only you want to buy a good, but you also have the effective demand. Let me write this, effective demand. You have both the, uh, the willingness, but also the money to buy that good to make your demand effective. Otherwise, you know, you can sort of, um, if you ask me, I would want to buy a, you know, like a Lamborghini, but if I don't have the money, then my wish will never become an effective demand. So that's another key thing to remember. And the last thing to remember is that when you look at a demand, that's a demand for cars or demand for any good, we looked at it, look at it at a, in a certain time period. Like there's a particular period we're looking at. Um, so it shows you how the price and quantity demanded will change uh, for different level of prices. The next thing we want to talk about is uh, about uh, the demand curve. So when you look at um, the relationship between uh, the price and quantity, we find out that the relationship is uh, downward sloping. In other words, when the price of a good goes down, you'll see people will tend to buy more of that good. So let's see that in terms of a diagram. So on my y-axis, I will have the price of the good. Let's say this is demand for cars. We're looking at demand for cars in a particular period. And on my x-axis, I'm looking at quantity bought right now, quantity bought or sold in the market. So when you look at the relationship, the relationship seems to look like this, where the demand curve is a downward sloping graph. And what we say is that if the price of a good goes down from P0 to P1, you will see the quantity demanded to go up. Now, I'm, let me write this here, price goes down, the quantity demanded goes up. Now you will notice this that I'm saying quantity demanded and I'm not saying demand and there's a reason why I'm saying quantity demanded because there is a difference between the demand and the quantity demanded. Uh, this is the demand curve of the quote. It shows you the demand for let's say cars. Let me write this. This is the demand, demand for, demand for cars. But when I say quantity demanded, I mean to say is quantity bought at a particular particular price. So if I want to say what's the quantity bought at a particular price, let's say P naught, the answer would be Q naught would be the quantity bought. I can't say it's a quantity it's the demand for the good. I say it's the quantity demanded for the good. Similarly, at P1, the quantity demanded and not demand is Q1. But this in all is your total demand for or the demand for cars. So the demand curve shows you the relationship between price and quantity, while the quantity demanded is the quantity bought or demanded at a particular price. So that's an important distinction that we want to sort of make. We also want to talk about basically why is demand curve downward sloping. We identified two reasons why demand curve is downward sloping. The first one is what we call the income effect. The income effect simply says this, that when the price of a good goes down, our purchasing power goes up. Because our purchasing power goes up, we are able to buy more. And because we are able to buy more, we will end up buying more and you will end up seeing quantity demanded to go up. So when you go from P0 to P1, 
because the goods are becoming cheaper, you are able to buy more. Let's say if you have um, $100, right, if this is your income. And let's say right now the price of a good is like, say, $2. Well, this would mean the quantity would be 50, right, because 100 divided by 2 is 50. Now, suddenly, if the price goes from $2 to $1, your same 100 would now buy you, for example, 100 divided by 1 would be 100 units. So which means that your same amount of money can buy you more goods, your purchasing power goes up. And that means that you are able to buy more, and if you do buy more, uh, you will be able to see that the demand curve will be downward sloping because price is going down, your quantity demanded is going up. Second reason is what we call the substitution effect. The substitution effect says this, that when the price of a good goes down, it becomes cheaper than the substitutes. What are substitutes? Substitutes are basically rival goods. Let's say the goods that you um, can also consume but may not consume. For example, Coke and Pepsi are substitutes to each other. So when the price of, let's say, Coke goes down, Coke becomes relatively cheaper than its substitute, which is Pepsi. And as a result of that, people may want to buy more of uh, Coke and less of Pepsi. So this substitution effect simply is that the good is now becoming cheaper than its substitute. substitute. So price goes down, you buy more of uh, that good because it's now cheaper than its substitute making quantity demanded to go up. So two reasons why we our demand curve is downward sloping, the income and the substitution effect. The next discussion we want to have is basically about uh, the movement versus movement versus shift of the demand curve. Okay, so what happens uh, or what results in a movement along the demand curve versus what results in a shift of the demand curve. We, we say this that if there's a change in price, triangle is a symbol for change, change in price, we see this that there is a change in your quantity demanded, right? This means we are moving along the demand curve. So if this is my demand curve uh, D naught, I am moving along the demand curve because the price of the good is changing. So we say this, that any time there is a movement along the demand curve, it has to be because the price of the good is changing. Uh, but if there is a, a non-price factor, and we'll talk about what those non-price factors are, if there's a non-price factor, there will be what we call a shift of the demand curve. What do you mean by shift of the demand curve? So look at this. Let me write, label it properly, quantity and price. Quantity and price, this is price is quantity. So let's say if this is your demand curve right now, right? And let's say the price right now is let's say ten dollars. And and right, and right now you are demanding let's say twenty units. And what if I tell you that you know like suddenly for the same price of ten dollar, the consumer wants to buy more of the good. Right? So let's say he wants to buy let's say thirty of the goods. In fact, for all prices, his willingness is going up to buy more of the good. So if the price is the same and his willingness or even ability to buy more has gone up, that will result in what we call a rise in demand. And a rise in demand would mean your demand curve goes up, which means it's, it shifts to the right. But what if demand is... Uh, going down. How do I show that? The demand demand going down would mean, let's say, we go from D naught to, let's say, D2. For the same price, if you want to buy less, for example, if you want to buy only 10, this means, let me zoom it, this means your demand is falling. So, a fall in demand basically means you are, your demand is falling, means it is, demand curve is shifting, shifts to to the left 
Why does it happen? We'll talk about it in one minute. So whenever demand curve shifted to the right, this means that for all level of prices, the consumer wants to buy more. And whenever demand curve shifted to the left, this means for all level of prices, the consumer is buying less of the good. So what are the factors that uh, result in uh, a change in demand or a shift of the demand curve? So let, let's call them the non uh, price factors. The first non-price factor we want to talk about is uh, income. I income is an important factor. We know this. When the income to go up, um, we will buy more of some goods uh, that we like and we are unable to afford previously. We would want to buy more of them. And similarly, income goes uh, down. We may decide to not buy those goods because we can't uh, afford them. We no longer can sort of uh, buy them or maybe we move to the cheaper substitute so when your income and the symbol we use for income is y uh, when your income go up the depend and the demand uh, rises we call those goods as normal goods um, and these are the goods that you'll see has what we call a direct relationship therefore direct relationship with income relationship with income then you have some goods where the income go up you will see the demand actually falls these are what we call inferior goods and these goods have what we call an indirect relationship let me give you some example of direct and indirect, I mean, uh, normal and inferior goods relationship. So, for example, demand for your private transport would be what we call private transport would be what we call normal in nature. Why will it be normal in nature? Well, because, you know, like if your income go up, you may decide to drive your car, but if your income go down, uh, you may decide to not uh, drive your car, but decide to probably go by bus or even pool, uh, do carpooling. So when your income go up and your demand is for some goods are falling, we call it inferior. So here the good example would be public transport. Public transports may see a fall in demand when incomes are rising, but public transports de uh, definitely will see a rise in demand when incomes are falling. So uh, here, in this case, for normal goods, when your income go up, you'll see the demand curve will be shifting to the right, right, to the right. And for uh, same case, when incomes are rising, public transport will see a demand curve shifting to the left. So this, irrespective of whatever the price is, because your incomes are rising, you will buy more of these normal goods and irrespective of the prices, because your income are rising, you'll de demand less of what we call inferior goods. So this is how the relationship may look like. The second factor that we want to discuss is what we call your price of related goods. So what are related goods? Well, related goods are those goods which can see which way there is a relationship between them in terms of, you know, like if the price of a good goes up, uh, and your demand changes, um, be it going up or going down, would mean there is some relationship. So there are two kinds of relationships that we explore. One is your, your substitutes, and another one is what we call your complements. What are substitutes? Well, substitutes are simply goods which are in rival demand, which means consumption of uh, one good would automatically mean consumption of consumption less consumption of another good. So, for example, people deciding to buy more of uh, Coke would mean they are definitely deciding to buy less of Pepsi because they are in rival demand to each other. So, here what we say is just that, for example, if the price of uh, C for Coke Coke goes up, you would see your firms, uh, your consumers, to buy less of Coke. So, quantity of uh, Coke demanded will fall but at the same time 
why would people buy less of uh, sort of Coke? Is because they will find Pepsi to be cheaper, so the demand demand for Pepsi will go up. And that would mean for Coke, if I want to sort of make a graph for Coke, the demand curve may stay the same, but there will be what we call uh, a rise in price. So there's a movement along the curve, right? So you go from Q0 to Q1. Why? Because the good is become expensive. So, so, so there's a fall in quantity demanded for Coke. If this is the market for Coke, let me label this. This is, let's say, Coke. And uh, for Pepsi, on the other hand, you would see the demand to rise. Now, I have a bad habit of not labeling graphs because, you know, like I'm sort of teaching right now. And, and so um, I can get away with kind of like not labeling graph. But you have to label graph when you're drawing it in, in, in your exams or in your tests and in your um, classwork and so on and so forth, right? So so here what we see is, is that when the price of a, a substitute, uh, price of a good goes up, you buy less of that good because you buy buying more of the rival goods. So the demand for your rival goods will go up. So there is what we call a rise in the price of a good would result in a rise in demand for the substitute. Make sense? So let's talk about now the complements. What are complements? Complements are what we call jointly demanded. Let me write this. Jointly demanded. Let's zoom on complements. So complements are joint, jointly demanded, which means that you're like uh, they consume together. A good example would be, for example, uh, for me, uh, milk and tea are kind of like complements. Uh, I like my tea to have milk. Uh, and that means that whenever, for example, price of uh, sort of uh, tea goes up, right, I may decide to buy less of tea. So quantity demanded for tea goes up, uh, for tea goes down. So Q goes down for tea, right? But at the same time, because I am more buying less of tea, the demand for milk, demand for milk, for me will fall. Why? Because I'm not going to buy uh, milk now because I'm drinking less tea. Why am I drinking less tea? Because tea is becoming expensive. So for the market for tea, it's a, if the price is going up, so price goes up, you will buy less of tea. And because you are buying less of tea, you do not want to buy the good that is jointly consumed for you, which is, which is uh, milk. So this is my tea market. You can see there's a movement along the demand curve happening here. So price is going up, I'm buying less of the good. As a result of this, the demand for T will fall from T D naught to D1. So demand curve is shifting backward. Make sense? So this is your milk market. So in the case of complements, the the story is this that when the price of a good goes up, the demand for the complement will fall. And vice versa, when the price goes down, the demand for complement will go up. For example, price of tea goes down, I decide to drink more of tea, automatically I will buy more milk to, to uh, go along with my tea. The next factor we want to talk about is uh, change in taste or fashion. The more desirable people find a good, uh, the more they will uh, demand that code. So uh, let's say if there's a change in taste and uh, people start to like wearing uh, more of, for example, uh, skinny jeans, then you would see the demand for uh, skinny jeans to go up. Uh, and, and taste can be affected by many things, you know, like by advertising, by fashion, and even by, you know, like um, observing other consumers. So, you know, you see a friend uh, wearing something and you like that good, you may demand more of that good. So, so observing other consumers may also become a factor. And a lot of companies spend a lot of money in marketing primarily because uh, they want to build brand loyalty, which can make the demand for the good to go up. And you have long-lasting consumer as a result of that. The next factor we want to talk about is... Uh, rise in population. So if there's a rise in population, we know this demand for some goods will go up. For example, 
you know, if there is a rise in um, uh, young population, we will see demand for goods which are uh, desired to be consumed by young people will go up. Similarly, if there is a rise in aging population, more old people in economy, you will see demand for some goods which is consumed by old people will go up. So, a rise in population could be one factor that can result in demand to change. Another one could be, you know, weather. You know, if there is a change in weather, we will see uh, some kinds of goods to be demanded more. For example, in winters, like uh, like demand for sweaters may go up or demand for, for example, heating may go up in winters. Similarly, when you look at uh, summers, demand for, you know, cold drinks or ice creams may go up in, in the summer or uh, demand for t-shirts may go up in the summer. So, depending on the weather, sometimes the demand for goods may change as well. The next discussion we want to have uh, regarding demand would be what we call market demand. From our consumers' demand, individual consumers' demand, we can f figure out what we call our market demand. Our market demand is simply the horizontal summation of individual consumers, individual consumers demand curve. So, when you look at individual consumers demand curve and I add this up horizontally, I can get my market demand curve. So, let me give you an example. Let's say we have a very simple market and in that market there are only two consumers, consumer A and consumer B. Okay, so let's make the demand diagram. So, let's say this is consumer A this is consumer B and uh, this is the whole market. So, and this is of course price, price, price and then quantity, quantity and quantity. So, let us say consumer A has a demand curve like this one, let us call it DA, consumer B has a demand curve like this one and let us say if these are the two consumers in this market, I am going to horizontally sum up their demand curve. So, for example, at price of five dollars, let's say consumer A is asking for ten units, while at the price of five dollars, consumer B is asking for, for example, twenty units. Then the market would be demanding at five dollars, twenty plus ten. This horizontal numbers twenty plus ten that would be thirty units. Similarly, at the price of four dollar, if consumer A is asking for, let's say. 20 units and at 4 consumer B is asking for, for example, uh, 50 units, then the market at 4 would be asking for, would be asking for 50 plus 20 which is 70. Now, we can do this exercise for all the prices and then sum it up horizontally and we can find what we call our market demand which is just a horizontal summation of all the individual consumers demand curve.